You're tuned in to Super Talk 1270 and Free For All Friday. Compelling local talk at 11 o'clock. Free For All Friday features groups and organizations that are plugged into progress here in Central North Dakota. Our rotating panel includes members of the Bismarck Downtowners, the Mandan Progress Organization, the Bismarck Mandan Chamber of Commerce, and representatives from Pride of Dakota. You're invited to call in and join the discussion. It's Free For All Friday on Super Talk 1270. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Free For All Friday program. This is the Pride of Dakota edition. I'm Scott Wild, and with me is Kelly Wald, marketing specialist for the Pride of Dakota program. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you today? I'm amazing. Good. Yeah, it's Friday. Okay. <laughs> and the sun is shining. It's yep, beautiful. and we got we got an awesome, awesome lineup today. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be great. Absolutely. A little bit different format. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Hey, if you want to listen to the show online or find replays of the podcast, you can always visit supertalk1270.com, or they have a Facebook page. Facebook.com slash Supertalk1270. Now, today, Kelly, we are introducing kind of a brand new format to the show, uh, something a little different. Before, we would always bring in um, featured Pride of Dakota members and, and mm-hmm. talk to them about their business, which we will still do to a degree. But this we're calling the Small Business Development Series. Yes. And we, I know we, that we've recently changed the podcast over to sort of the similar format. Um, but this is where we talk about what it takes to start and grow a small business right here in North Dakota. Right. I'm, I'm very excited. Our two guests with us today are fantastic um, and great resources with a lot of experience in this particular area. Yeah. So for this show, we picked a business owner, and, and we couldn't think of anyone more appropriate than Erica Hager. She owns Bison Booties. And mm-hmm. uh, last month on the show, when you and I were here for the 4th of July, um, we talked about maybe the top four that uh, that influenced me the most, that, that are kind of on my radar the most when it comes to Pride of Dakota members. Erica was definitely one of them. Yes. So if you want to follow a business, uh, if you've got your own business, if you're on social media, if you're learning to market, and you want to follow someone as an example of what to do and what you can do and what's possible, mm-hmm. even in rural North Dakota, Erica's definitely one, buysandbooties.com. Um, she's on Twitter at Buys and Booties. Then we have Glenn Muskie. He is with, now here, check this out. He's the Rural and Agribusiness Enterprise Development Specialist for the Center <laughs> for Community Vitality. I I think quite possibly maybe the longest title I've ever heard, but. And we might have well to go deserved. to commercial break now that I've said his full <laughs> title. No, so uh, it's with NDSU Extension. Yes. And so Glenn is our expert. And, and now he helps us small businesses and he helps educate them and and find resources for them and this is another person that is always on my radar you know right. they the, the two of them just are are constantly appearing in my social media streams in my inbox and so they're always kind of top of mind so that's why we thought it would be perfect to bring the two of them together mm-hmm. and talk about owning a business in a, in a rural environment yes from so, an actual experience perspective um, with owning the business, and then from the resource, resource perspective for what can what opportunities are all out there. Absolutely. So we'll be learning more about that. Uh, but before we talk to them, to Erica and Glenn, uh, we need to talk about what's going on in the world of Pride of Dakota. Oh, everything. Oh, no. Everything's going on. <laughs> um, so super exciting. This year, obviously, is North Dakota's 125th celebration. That's amazing. Um, so the next opportunity for people to come and check out some different Pride of Dakota booths and do some shopping yep. will be on their August 16th event up at the Capitol. Um, it's going to be a full, fun day with music and lots of great food and about 40 different um, Pride of Dakota companies set up there. So come check us out at the Capitol on Saturday, August 16th. So it's kind of like a big kickoff for the, the right. big anniversary. Right, because the statehood doesn't happen until November 2nd. But sure. Yeah. While the you gotta weather have a, is nice. Yeah, when you tr- anytime something. you turn 125, you got to have a birthday party that lasts Absolutely. at least a year. So that's <laughs> Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. So we've got that one, and then we start off with our um, fall day at the Capitol mm-hmm. um, on September 11th. And then our showcases kick off right after that. We're out in Dickinson on um, the 20th and 21st of September. And then we head up to Williston in October. We'll be up there the 18th and 19th. Okay. And then it's on. <laughs> it's game on. You know, because I just got my, my notice in the mail. I think it was probably a month ago, but I remember seeing the the flyers come in the mail and, and you know, it's all the, hey, if you're a vendor and you want to exhibit mm-hmm. at these things. And I'm, I am thinking, man, how many people are literally sprinting to their mailbox and sprinting back to the post office today to get these in? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. We just um, actually are. We just accepted forms this week for the holiday showcases. Um, okay. Forms could come in Tuesday and the like at least two of the four shows are, are full. 
already. So if you are a member and you're listening to this, don't worry. We will get back to you. We'll notify you of everything. We're just really working on inputting everything and making sure that our database is correct before we get the word out to everybody. So just hold tight. Um, yep. And if you are a shopper who's interested in them, the dates for them are we are in Grand Forks November 8th and 9th. The weekend after that, the 15th and 16th of November, we will be in Minot up at the State Fair Center. And then the following weekend, we head over east to Fargo. We will be in the Civic Auditorium there the 21st through the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Then we'll give you the weekend off for Thanksgiving and all that Black oh, nice Friday fun shopping. <laughs> and then we wrap up back here in Bismarck at the Civic Center um, December 5th through the 7th. That one I'm super excited about. They've really expanded the exhibit hall now. And so Absolutely. we will actually, there, our entire show will be in one room. So you know, I think the entire the reason they did the expansion to the Civic Center was just the product to go to showcase. So. <laughs> I think that was, they had to earmark all that money That's and right. time just to make sure that everyone was accommodated. So last year, kind of Minot was the surprise it was. Uh, bell of the ball. I mean, uh, between all the shows, I mean, really. So we're looking to maybe even break some more records I'm, up there. I'm thinking so, especially if, you know, weather hangs tight for us. Yeah. it's It was so nice last year. We were up in Minot, um, a, over 2,000 people from the year before. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, after the flood, everything... You know, and now Minot's really back on its feet and people are out and they want to really be reinvolved and they have time to be reinvolved in their sure. community. And it's it's great to see that kind of participation and stuff. And I didn't think Bismarck could get any bigger, but now we, uh, so <laughs> yep. maybe maybe we'll uh, set new standards this year with uh, the Bismarck show. I hope so. Yeah, because every time so. I'm usually in there doing interviews like right before the show and people are setting up and then I realize I can't get out of here because there's literally right. lines around the block and line. this is like, you know, Friday afternoon and... <laughs> I'm blocked in, and so it takes me about know, four hours to leave. Yeah, so, it's quite a it's process. All right. It's all right. It's, it's good definitely time. a good thing. <laughs> so how was the uh, State Fair? I know that you had um, – the weather wasn't oh, totally cooperative, well, but – for the most – up right up until about an hour before we were scheduled to leave, yeah. it was wonderful. Um, we fed about 1,000 people, came through our line for, for the $1 buck. lunch. Yeah, it was awesome. The, um, the FFA state officers were there helping us out. Ooh, great. Right on. Great group of kids um just wonderful and then we had i want to say about 24 vendors there um that you could do shopping from it was a fun day we had our cooking contest um grandma's cooking out of ashley one and then this year we also added a snack stick contest which was um, that's right different like beef or yep. pork or whatever type of snack sticks um that are done by north dakota processing facilities and lnm meats out of grand forks which is also a pride of dakota member sure. um won that contest. So congratulations to those two companies. So what, what was their product? Uh, it was a beef snack stick. But Okay, so just a beef snack stick, like yep, a Slim yep. Jim or a piece of beef right. jerky yep. or something Each, like that. Each um, facility kind of had their own yep. take okay. on it. Okay. So, yeah. Very, very cool. wonderful. Um, and just one other quick thing I want to mention for any Pride of Dakota members that might be listening, um, our trade show assistance grants that we do offer and then our retail store grants that we do offer have been a huge hit this, yeah. this last year. And so we are actually tapped out there. Okay. So for the rest of this biennium, um, unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to offer any more grants, but we have requested additional funding for the 15 through 17 biennium. So next July, please submit your applications again and we'll be happy to check those out. What an awesome problem to have though, right? I mean, it's it better is. than having lots of money left over and, and it just kind of proves, it's like the, the pride of signing up for the, to be a vendor at a Pride of Dakota showcase. Right. You have to act early. I mean, you have to be so on your game. And I know people that will literally stand at the mailbox, fill it out, and put it right back in, or drive it right up to the Capitol that day. Right, absolutely. So. And, and that really speaks to the quality of the products that the members are producing. That's Fantastic. When we come back, we're going to be starting our small business development series. I can't wait. It's going to be Erica Hager, Bison Booties, and Glenn Muskie, the Rural and Agribusiness Enterprise Development Specialist with the Center for Community Vitality. Stay right there. Right now, 79. Your news leader, weeknights at 6 and 10. Super Talk 1270. Hey there, welcome back to the Free For All Friday program. This is the Pride of Dakota edition. Uh, Scott Wild, along with Kelly Wald. You know, I forgot to mention our fabulous extruser, producer man extraordinaire, Jim Walsh, is always making us sound amazing. Thank you. So, um, hey, if you want to listen to the show or find replays, you can always go to supertalk1270.com. In the studio today, we have Erica Hager. She is the owner of Bison Booties, a Pride of Dakota member. How are you? Good, thanks. And we also have Glenn Muskie. And I'm going to say your title and department one more time uh, for the listeners. So get a pen and paper. Write this down. It's the Rural and Agribusiness Enterprise Development Specialist 
for the Center for Community Vitality. Welcome, Glenn. And you can tell that was done by committee. Thank <laughs> very much. <laughs> so you're with NDSU Extension. Yes, I am. And you know, Glenn, before the mics came on, he just pointed out, he goes, well, we have the appropriate business with bison booties here for and NDSU. So what, I mean, never even thought of that when we booked. It, it's a great deal. We love it. So go bison. <laughs> it's That's bison amazing. theme hour. That's awesome. And so for, for anybody who might be listening and would like to maybe hop online and check out um, what these two entities do. Um, Erica, would you maybe want to give the listeners like your website and sure. social media accounts? Yep. So I'm with Bison Booties. You can find us at bisonbooties.com. That's the easiest. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for Bison Booties. So easy to find, bisonbooties.com. Awesome. And then Glenn, how about yours? Uh, my uh, web address is www.agag.ndsu.edu slash small business, all one word. And then you can also find me on Facebook, NDSU Extension, EXT, small biz, NDSU, EXT, small biz, B-I-Z there. And then I am on Twitter. I'm not as good as Erica because I have a different name, didn't do it right, where I'm G Muskie. Wonderful. So we're talking about small businesses in rural settings today. And I think it would be maybe appropriate so people just understand who we have at the table. Why don't you give us just a quick overview of your company? What do you do? Give me the history. Where are you located? Uh, what products and services do you offer? And we'll, we'll start with Erica, and then we'll move over to Glenn. Okay, thanks. Um, I kind of joke that my business happened by happy accident. So um, we live eight miles north of Mandan. And for those that aren't familiar with the area, I grew up in um, northern California, and I'm used to big cities. So I Mandan, I love the town. But to me, it's a very small town. Um, we just recently got a Walmart, for example. So we're in a small community, and we're eight miles from that small community. And then Bismarck is right next door over the river, and that's an additional probably seven miles. So I'm out of town, and I consider myself to live in the country. We have definitely more cows than people within a hundred or within a mile of us. So we're definitely rural. Um, we don't have neighbors per se. So just kind of give you a background of where we are located. So um, I was a stay at home mom with a newborn little girl about four years ago and nothing stayed on her kicky feet. And we had an unfinished basement and I had a box of quilt fabric scraps. I was a hobby sewer and I set to work to make something to put on her feet that would stay on. That's really how we started. Um, after many trial pairs, I came up with um, a kick-proof baby booty, and I call them bison booties because in the rural area that we live is directly across the uh, Missouri River from an area called Double Ditch. It's a Native American historical site. So I call them bison booties because bison used to roam on the land that we live on. And... Um, being that I liked these booties so much, I thought some friends back home in California might like them. So I sent a few pairs as baby gifts. And within a few months, they had friends that wanted to purchase them. And to make a long story short, I opened a website thinking I was just going to sell to a few friends. But within a month, I, or within a week, I had completely sold out. And within a couple months, I had a wholesale request. And so my business really just snowballed from there um, to where it is today. Um, bison booties are mom designed by me. They stay on even the kickiest baby feet. They're cotton soft sole booties and they have gentle fabric wrapped elastic around the ankle. So they're very easy to put on, but they're difficult to kick off. So they're easy on and off by moms, but difficult for the baby to kick off because they stay real snug and secure. They're very slim fitting, not like a clunky tennis shoe at all. And babies love cuddling their toes into the insole, which is a Sherpa fleece. So it's cuddly soft. And the sole of the booty is a suede-like um, fabric. But they're completely machine washable, so they don't track around germs from everywhere you're trucking. And um, each pair is made here in North Dakota out of designer fabrics. And the styles are many, many, many. And I'm constantly changing the, the line of styles that we have for both boys, girls, and neutral gender, in case someone doesn't know if they're having a boy or girl. And the sizes are now available from newborn to adult, and we also have bibs. You finally have adult sizes. I finally have adult sizes. I yes. can't <laughs> wait. Now, I did not know that, so I cannot wait to uh, order a pair. That's going to be amazing. So um, my question for you was, you customize these, right? But you do not have a storefront. I do not. Okay. Nope. Um, I, the main, like I mentioned when I started the business, we, we don't have neighbors. I'm not on a street necessarily. So we... Um, I just had a little website that I started, and that's how everything started. And 
today that's the main business is selling online. So I do everything from list the photograph the products, list the products online. Um, when a customer buys them um, in my studio, which is now in our finished basement, so I have lights and heating now, which is wonderful. Um, I have a printer and I buy the postage and I print the postage label and then I can drop them in any um, mailbox. They're completely paid. Today the um, postal carrier is actually picking them up on my front porch. So it's it's kind of amazing that I'm able to do all of that from the country, from my own house. And now I could be anywhere in the world and be able to, yeah, sell an item, print my postage, I guess probably anywhere in the U.S. Let me backtrack on that. I could be anywhere <laughs> in the U.S. and buy the postage and send it from anywhere. So it's a really cool thing that I can operate like that in the location that we're at. Um, I also sell wholesale to a few shops in the upper Midwest and um, sell at two shows every year. One is um, tomorrow, this coming weekend, in, um, the first weekend in August. And the, the Capital other, Affair. The Capital Affair, yeah. correct. And then I participate in a Pride of Dakota event as well. You even talked about how you have, I mean, you have such a following. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, you. You, you have people that are going to be waiting in line early <laughs> before you even open tomorrow. And they've even talked about that. I honestly find this hard to believe, but I'm super excited about it. Just that it's my business is at a point that, yeah, people, I've heard rumors of people that will be waiting before we open tomorrow at the Capitol Affair that will be waiting outside our tent for us to open. <laughs> now, if you're listening to this, I want to put this in perspective. Erica, I mentioned that she is eight miles north of Mandan, and you have had your products featured on the NBC television show Parenthood. Yep, yep. I mean, um, so if you watch, if you've ever watched Parenthood, you've probably seen Bison Booties, yeah, uh, as a as a as a set prop on there. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, the Bison Booties. There was probably I don't know eight different sightings last season. So almost any time the baby in Parenthood um, was on the show. She was wearing bison booties, which was amazing to me. I'm a, I watched the show anyway, so to be able to see my product was very exciting. And then their um, celebrity mom, actress, model, um, Jamie King, also is a big fan, and we email back and forth, and her little guy is spotted all over and by the paparazzi, always wearing bison booties. So, so. we'll definitely talk about that <laughs> when we get to marketing a little bit in a little bit, but I mean, I just want to give you perspective that th- this is why you you are on the show, because it's literally, uh, you are someone that, that truly gets how to build an audience and uh, and take it to a level that, that maybe people aren't expecting, you okay. know, even from th- north of Mandan. And <laughs> it is a phenomenal product and they're beautifully designed and, and even the packaging is amazing. And you kind of have a graphic art background. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I um, worked as a graphic artist before I became a stay-at-home mom. And again, I still am a stay-at-home mom. So today is the rare occurrence that I don't have two children at my side. Thankfully, my mother-in-law has them today. But <laughs> well, um, next time, bring them in the studio. Love <laughs> that'd to be have extra them. fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I have a graphic design background, and it's amazing how things come together. Never. When I became a stay-at-home mom, did I think I would be able to apply my sewing hobby with my business degree, with my graphic design background, and it all came together. Really, I just feel very blessed that I'm able to pull from all my experience and my talents and the things I enjoy to do that every day with my kids at my side. So. Well, we uh, we have a couple minutes before our break here, and so we're gonna we're gonna have part one of Glenn's introduction here, and then when we come back from the break, we'll we'll finish that. But Glenn, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, what you do, and what your products and services and that you offer? Okay, thanks, Scott. But I was fascinated by Erica's story. I mean, uh, part the focus. I'm with NDSU Extension, and uh, started about four years ago, and we've been doing for the Center Community Vitality, economic development, community development. And four years ago, they specifically started, or they brought me in to work on small businesses. And we've been doing some of that before. But it's as you heard Erica's story, it was people have questions or people run into hurdles and they have roadblocks and stuff. And so one of the things we try to do is to be there to provide education, to provide one-on-one answers to people as they're trying to overcome some of these hurdles and, and, and decide how are they going to market? What type of product? Uh, you know, you heard Erica give a wonderful uh, presentation as to what are her booties? What is the problem that mom's had sure. that she solved? And that's why it's a product that people want. 
you know, and that's one thing that we always encourage people to do is to listen to that customer. So the products and services that we have are educational in nature. We have some online at my website. Uh, we have some what we call Z mags or online magazines that you can access if you're in agritourism or e-tailing or food. If, if food is a big interest. A lot of people have that food product they want to do something with and stuff. So we have things there. Right now, as we're doing this, I'm missing a monthly talk show that we do, which features, just like you're doing, an entrepreneur okay. who talks about, because one of the things you can learn from those entrepreneurs, Erica and others, is they've been there, done that. And so we feature every month an entrepreneur on our uh, uh, talk show, and it's a national uh, enterprise we've got going on here called powerofbusiness.net, but it's extension trying to find entrepreneurs from around the countries to talk about what did you do, how did you do it, and the topics vary all over the place. And the key thing is we do them in bite-sized chunks, 15 minutes. All of our products will sure. be geared around a 15-minute as aspect. So if someone wants to listen to the show, Glenn, um, where can they find out more information? Uh, powerofbusiness.net. They can Power just go out business. there and, and everything is recorded and put out on a YouTube channel. So, oh, uh, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we use Google, uh, uh, through some of the Google, uh, Google products and stuff. And so it's a video, not only an audio. So you can go out there and see it. Uh, sometimes it's just audio only if we don't have... You know, good broadband, but uh, we'll we'll take what we get. So everything's that you could go to YouTube and look for powerbusiness.net, or go to powerbusiness.net and just and and, and look for it. Well, we're going to step away and take a quick break, and when we come back, I've got some uh, questions specifically about some of the programs that you offer. Okay. Um, fantastic! We're visiting with Glenn Muskie and Erica Hager about rural business on the Pride of Dakota edition of the Free for All Friday. Stick around. Right now, seventy nine. Get the app called Radio Pup for your iPhone and take us everywhere you go. Biz Market Man Dan's own Super Talk 1270. And we want to welcome you back to the Free for All Friday program, Pride of Dakota edition. Scott Wild, Kelly Wald, Jim Walsh. And we are visiting today with Erica Hager and Glenn Muskie about doing business in rural communities. And before the break, we were just talking with Glenn about the NDSU Extension's um, Power of Business series that they have recently launched. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and kind of how it came to be and what the whole, what it all involves, I guess? Okay. Well, first off, it's uh, more than NDSU. Uh, colleagues, uh, as I said right now, our radio broadcast is going on, or not radio, video broadcast yeah. is going on. Uh, we have colleagues in Mississippi, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, across the country are participating in this effort. What what it was is, and it was specifically designed for especially small and rural business owners who have difficulty getting to educational programs. Right. They don't have time to spend a whole day, or maybe they have the time, but it's a long drive, it's resources, and but the big thing is a lot of these small business owners don't have a lot of employees, if any. And so you heard Erica talk about in her story, or we were chatting beforehand about who was all involved as she got ready for this weekend show and stuff. Uh, so there's nobody there. So how can they break away to get some educational information? That was the impetus for us to say, okay, we have rural small business owners who need help. How can we give it to them? And so we believed in small little tidbits, chunking it. These broadcasts are about 15 minutes in length, and we've done also some 15-minute videos and the idea is to give them little bits of information that just build upon each other and stuff. And, uh, and so we've only been operating for not even six months now. So what we would put out the call for is check out powerofbusiness.net and tell your friends. Get these other business owners involved. And that's, those are series, it's a series that anybody can participate. Anybody can participate. No cost, no charge for any of this. So just tune in, 1115. Uh, we do it at an odd time because it'll stick in your mind. 1115 Central Time on the first Friday of every month. And, and you don't today. have a big studio. You just are no studio. Using your, yep, your, yep, yeah. yep. We have the, uh, it's an interview situation. The interviewer sits wherever he or she may be. And the business owner, we don't even ask them to come away from, from wherever they are. They can do it right at home with their, I think today might, we might be using a smartphone to get this done. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Technology does wonderful things. So if you know if you ever have a chance, like Glenn said, first Friday of every month, check it out at eleven fifteen Central Time. Um, from there, I guess let's let's go back over to Erica um, and maybe really kind of get into the meat of things with what it is o to own a business in a rural setting. Like, what are some of the big challenges that you have come across in that 
situation. Yeah. Um, honestly, I can say that there haven't been many, which is really quite cool. It just kind of tells you what kind of age we live in with technology and sure. how much you can do from anywhere. The biggest issue has been very uh, specific to just our location and our houses. We've had trouble with reliable internet service, but as of today, as I'm driving into town, it's changing. There's a new line that's coming in. So, But if my internet was down for, let's say, two days straight just about a month ago, it's a big problem. I can't check my orders. I can't ship. Um, I'm trying to do things from my smartphone, and I just need my computer, and I need my internet. So that's honestly been the biggest challenge, and it's not a huge deal because – the you know, technology is getting, getting better. better. The yeah. technology is always getting better. And most people have more reliable internet service. It's just the little community that we live in. Mm-hmm. Um, other problems that wouldn't necessarily be, oh, well, it's because it's kind of rural, is um, if I run out of ink or toner for my printer to print labels, it's a decent drive. Well, <laughs> so um, now yeah. we have Walmart in town. But otherwise, it was like a 30, 40-minute drive for me to get to a store that would have ink for my printers. So I just have to really plan ahead, everything with grocery shopping too when you live out of town. I'm sure people can relate. You make your list and you make an efficient trip. So I just, I have plenty of ink at my house. Um, Packaging materials, uh, again with my branding items, I just have to make sure I have plenty at home because there is no one within 100 miles that can make the little bags that I need that I ship in. Sure. So I, uh, things like that, but you work around them and you just plan for things. Um, I was going to say, you're also a mom. So that, which means that you add 20 minutes to every trip. Yeah, exactly. Diapers and car seats. Diapers and car seats. Yep. <laughs> um, the other, just, it's not really a challenge, but just a different situation is I don't have, I'm not, you know, like if I lived in downtown Bismarck, for example, maybe a, uh, Uh, just as hypothetically, like maybe there was this cute little house that next door would become available and I could consider opening a storefront. That's not going to happen where I am. So I just have to plan for that, that if I ever want a storefront, hypothetically, years in the future, it's not going to be next door to me conveniently. It's going to need to be in a brick and mortar situation in a town. So it's not a big deal. And I love where I live. I wouldn't change it for the world. But um, those have been the biggest challenges. And honestly, they're not really challenges. You just work around them. Your foot traffic is virtual. Foot yes, traffic. I have virtual foot traffic. Yep. So, Glenn, um, you know, you, in listening to Erica and and with all the interviews that you've done and the work that you do, what what are some of the cha- common challenges that that you see for rural small businesses? Yeah, well, she I, Erica definitely touched on some of them, and 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 the one I want to f- get to first is is this issue of suppliers finding them. It's not only getting to suppliers, but so often we find business owners who are paying retail when they should be buying goods wholesale. Sure. And it sounds like Erica has got that, that, that situation covered, but quite often you're paying a retail price and then you're trying to make it in a retail market. doesn't work that way. And so it's working with the business owner to help them find reliable sources that will ship or deliver or whatever the case may be. Second, broadband. And, and, you know, today you need an online presence. I don't care if you are a storefront, you need an online presence because there may be people driving by who would love to stop in and don't even know you exist. And different businesses, that varies and stuff. So we do a lot of work with uh, preaching and and teaching about broadband. Uh, Certainly uh, trying to get them to have some type of presence, but at least checking their presence. What are people being said? I suspect if we would ask Erica, you know, do you check, you know, what the reviews are online? She'll probably nod her head or say, you betcha, I'm out there all the time and stuff. And you'd be amazed at the number of businesses that don't know that they have a poor review or somebody's really paying them. And that's out there. And any of us, we all have it. And we're just typing the name and we say, well, what do we, what can we find out about this business? So that's crucial that, that you tap into that. Uh, one of the things that s- small rural businesses, like any, uh, especially home-based and family who I work a lot with, loneliness. Sure. Nobody else is out there. And that's part of, again, back to this powerofbusiness.net. We're trying to connect business owners to business owners that there is somebody else who can help you. Not just those like myself who are professionals, but just business owner to business owner because you need a mentor. Absolutely. And, and that mentor can be so crucial helping walk you through some of the steps and stuff. So, you know, those are just some of the issues I'd throw out there. 
Well, I mean, even just the, the sense of community and knowing that you're not alone or you're not the only one experiencing that issue. And mm -hmm. I know that, that Eric, you have built up quite a network with other Pride of Dakota uh, members. In fact, when it comes to supplies, uh, I believe you and Melissa <laughs> Ahanen with uh, BBT Style and, and some of those others yep. will share fabric buys or you'll, yep, you'll go exactly. in together. Yeah, that's exactly the person I thought of. Melissa and I connected very early on in the first six months that I was selling these. And she made, um, at the time, she made baby hats, and now she's expanded to headbands. And, um, yeah, we connect on everything from potty training our kids to buying fabric to buying elastic <laughs> to shipping. I was telling her, like, i got to get these shipping labels I use. They're amazing, and you don't have to use tape anymore. And, yeah, so she and I have really been each other's resource. And then she has a sister that's also um, has yeah. a business. So between the three of us, we have – you know, kind of learned as we go along. And, and, and her sister's in Fargo. Yep. So yep. we've got Mandan, Lincoln, and Fargo covered in this yep. little mini network. Yeah. So it's, we have an amazing little network, but yeah, each of us also has our own um, other network of just peers and, you know, things like this where I can connect and when we're off air, we're chatting about things. And sure. um, yeah, like you said, loneliness, getting out there. And Glenn talked about his Power of Business series. And while I, um, sew or work or work on my website or photograph, I usually have a podcast or um, an audiobook or something playing, especially if it's during nap time when my kids are quiet. So I love to get that virtual friend, I guess, if that makes sense, like, yeah. and learn at the same time. And um, it's very valuable as a business owner to be able to just completely uh, continually educate yourself and learn new things and technology is continually evolving so there might be a new service that you don't know about i just found this new shipping service that's amazing and so yeah it's well t tell us about it. <laughs> it's called <laughs> ship station it's the coolest thing so i can import from any of my online stores or like you can ship through paypal which is what a lot of people do um but it pulls through all of those and it's so efficient you save save a ton of time and then it also emails the customer their tracking number and it's just amazing, and I wouldn't have found it if it wasn't from listening to a different podcast about um, an online store. So, yeah, you can. Um, there's a ton of resources out there. You just have to go grab them. You Keep, know, keeping your ears opening and listening is what what I you know, and that's what we we always try to encourage people is you never know where that tidbit is going to come from. So you need to form your networks like you did, and today with the virtual world, those networks can be anywhere as you as has yeah. been pointed out here and stuff. So it's it's a great thing, and you can go online, uh, it'll be LinkedIn, Facebook. There's groups all over the place uh, specifically for small businesses, and if you don't like one, go find another. Sure. You know, and as we talk about challenges, you know, our, our next follow-up was going to be talking about our opportunities. And I think we've naturally segued, you know, both of you did a nice job of naturally segueing into how to turn some of those challenges into opportunities. And, you know, the opportunity of joining a network or, or getting some of your training virtually or connecting with people. I mean, you know, Eric, you're so connected with your audience. In fact, didn't you ask your audience for <laughs> questions, you know, uh, for today's show and things like that? Yeah, this morning before I came to town, I posted that I was going to be on the show and listen. So, hello. And um, if they had any <laughs> questions. So, I did get – I. Uh, my internet is not working at the moment, so I apologize. But I did have one question about what's been my favorite style that I've ever done. And that would definitely be either the bison or the maps. And the sole reason for that is that it's original two bison booties. I designed the fabric myself and the little bison – because of the name bison booties i wanted bison on the bison booties sure i didn't couldn't find any fabric that was already printed so i designed my own had it printed and so those are custom little bison bison booties that you won't find anywhere else in the world the fabric because it's mine and um original two bison booties and then the vintage north dakota maps are the same idea i found a um 1920s North Dakota map before Lake Sakakawea even existed. Wow. It's old, old. And so all the old tiny towns are on there and it's very I made it primarily because it's North Dakota's 125th anniversary and I want it. I just love North Dakota. So um, those are very cool because again, it's original to Bison Booties. Well, th this is fascinating conversation. I can't wait to continue it. We're going to step away for a quick break. You're listening to the Free For All Friday program. This is the Pride of the Gold Edition. We've got Erica Hager and Glenn Muskie in the studio. When we come back, we're going to continue talking about small business in rural areas. Stay tuned. Right now, 79. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. Hey, welcome back to the Free For All Friday program, Pride of Dakota edition. Scott Wilde, Kelly Wald, Jim Walsh. And in the studio, we are having a fantastic discussion with Erica Hager of Bison Booties and Glenn Muskie with MDSU Extension, the Center for Community Vitality. So earlier in the show, Erica, you had talked a little bit about how you've added, you know, some new things into your product line. Um, 
as a rural business and, you know, being the only employee of your business, can you talk a little bit about expansion, kind of how and when you decided to and what the process for that was? Yeah, um, a couple years, probably about 18 months ago, maybe two years ago, time goes fast. Um, it got to a point that I couldn't manage the business and so every single thing. And so I met with the Idea Center here in Bismarck and was just like, what do I do? I'm a mom. I had one child at the time. I can't keep up. No matter what I do, I just can't keep up. And they said, well, have you considered contracting with someone else to help alleviate some of the pressure of sewing everything? And it's like this light bulb moment, like that could work. So my husband happens to be an accountant. I talked to him and he said, that's a super easy way to do it. You don't have to worry nearly as much about taxes and things. You need a contract. And that person needs to understand that they need to withhold a certain amount of money for taxes at the end of the year but it's it's a very easy way to um, expand your workforce um, they work with in their own homes with their own equipment um, right now I contract with all moms in the Bismarck area um, they're amazing they're super talented I've got probably about eight to ten now and I love working with them I've made friends with them now I mean it's it's amazing and I feel just again very blessed that I can help their families and that they can have a part in my business with their talents and so that's how I was able to expand without having to build a warehouse or um, expand in the place next door. It was um, just, yeah, making friends and doing it that way. So I have contract help, contract workers. Yep. So quick question, you know, when, when you have other people that are making your product uh, is, is it difficult to let go of control? I yes. mean, I think a lot of people that, you know, they say, I, this is my baby. Uh, I, I've, I've set a standard. Uh, they're not going to do it like that. How do you get over that hurdle? Well, I don't know if you have like any favorite uh, family recipes that your grandma makes the best coleslaw. Yep. Okay? It's kind of like that. So I made... It's caramel rolls in yeah, my family. Exactly. So I made bison booties. And so then, you know, the, I remember the first couple times I contracted with someone, it was like, okay, we'll sew it like this. And no, that's not right. Okay, so like this. No, that's, I mean, it just the little quirks of your own machine and the little quirks of how I would twist my hand a certain way, but um, with patience. And I never had written down instructions for myself, so I had to, you know, step by step. Okay, now what am I doing? Okay, now what am I doing? And you have to just build that really slowly and, again, become, you know, form a friendship so that you can really work back and forth. Um, again, they work in their own home, so I'm not there. Um, I pay per item versus hourly, so they do it at their own pace. Okay. And... Um, it's been phenomenal. It's been great. But yeah, there have been major hurdles, but it's been amazing. And I just, I love that I can work with these other moms. And again, it takes me out of the loneliness of being on my own little island out on the prairie that, sure. um, yeah, I'm constantly texting and okay, that task is done. Now we're going to get ready for the next one. And um, it's been really great. Um, I've also met with the Idea Center for various other issues that come up as you have a small business, things you never thought you'd need to think about. Um, trademarked. I trademarked my name, and I decided I was going to be very independent and file the paperwork myself. Great idea. Um, but it got rejected. <laughs> Somehow I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was surprisingly fairly easy. Um, but apparently after meeting with an attorney that the Idea Center connected me with, almost every single trademark that is self-filed gets rejected. And he just said, they're kind of like testing you to see if you're serious. I'm like, that's just not very nice. <laughs> sure. But um, so it got rejected and he was able to refile it and it got approved right away. So, but again, it's connections that I made through the Idea Center. I was so discouraged for months after getting that rejection. Like, why? You know, they, they don't like me, but um, it's just part of business and you need to be tough. So um, again, yeah, the Idea Center was amazing with just connect, making those connections and saying, that's all right. This person knows how to get you through. Um uh, yeah, different. Um, I recently launched my own website. So bisonbooties.com just launched about a month, a month and a half, two months ago. And they really helped give me that extra push. Sure. When you're looking for a website hosting service, it's like, oh, it's so confusing. And again, that's, I guess, a kind of a downside of being right. in a rural area. You don't have, I don't know, just the guy next door. Who's he got his website with? I don't have that. So right. Just finding the best service for you, the Idea Center was great with streamlining my ideas and really saying, you know, this is a good fit. This might not be. Um, yeah, definitely connect with your – I would definitely advise connecting with your local entrepreneur center to um, work through some of those issues. Because sure. they've been amazing with um, helping with that. So, Glenn, what, you know, tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are, you know, on, on business expansion. You've, you've heard Erica's story and, and what, what are some, you know, advice that or what are scenarios that you see when it comes to expansion and when is the right time to expand or what things do you need to consider before you do that? When's the right time to expand? That's a question, the question we hear a lot and stuff. And part of it is Erica had to face the question is, can I give it up? 
and and what parts can I give up? Now we have entrepreneurs and small business owners who she gave up some of the production side. Some people cannot do that, and so we have some who say I'm going to give up the peer management side. Sure. I don't like doing accounting. I don't like doing the books. I don't want to do shipping. And so they have to decide what part of it they're going to give up. The other thing is, as she talks about expansion, is what do, how do I want to expand and what line? You know, do I just want to make more bison booties or do I want to go into a whole separate line? In her case, she still had demand for her product. And so let's fill that first because that's what customers are asking for. But others have to look at a, at a different line, adding a new line to what they're already doing and stuff because it starts to round out after a while, potentially. Uh, we have a huge global market, but still sometimes, you know, uh, unless you're doing something to keep that new and fresh all the time. Uh, luckily, we always keep having babies and stuff. <laughs> so there's always a demand for more buys and booties and stuff. So, you know, those are a couple items that you want to think about. Yeah. So and Erica, you, know. you recently just expanded too. Yep. Yep. Your product line. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I was going to mention that. Um, before I do that, um, another way that I was able to expand without having to open my own brick and mortar store was to find an awesome retailer who could be your feet on the ground and interact with those customers daily that I wasn't able to do. So I, um, Jamie from Dickinson at Momo's Garden, she's also has a store in Bismarck now. She's been my like eyes and ears in the store. Yeah. She, um, I sell wholesale to her, so she sells them retail. Um, it's been an amazing friendship and partnership, and she is really able to feed me information back. Okay, people are looking for this style. They're looking for these sizes. They're, you know, what about this or that? And so that's where a lot of, it was my way of expanding without, physically expanding um, my. So how did you select her to kind of be your key retailer? I mean, was it something where you you were familiar with the store and you loved what she did, or did you know her personally outside of I that? I did not know her personally. It started really slow. You know, she called and said, I just opened this store, and everybody is asking about these buys and booties. I don't even know what they are. Can you send me some? Yep. So it started slow. And, you know, just over time, we built trust, and she sold them wonderfully. So it just worked. And so, yeah, I, it's, I, I'm just dropping off a package for her today. And it's, it's great. Yeah, she, she can move the product. And she also just has a great way of educating the customer. And I love the items that she has in the store. I support her, you know, way of doing business. And so, yeah, we're friends. <laughs> and so she started in Dickinson. She's also, uh, is she expanding to Bismarck? Yeah, there's she? a store open in Bismarck in November. So they're okay. definitely open now. Perfect. Awesome. So, and I, when we were on break, you had just mentioned that you have actually never spent a single dollar on advertising. <laughs> no, I dabbled in Facebook ad once, kind of by accident. Yeah, but five dollars no. does not count. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never paid for advertising. Um, I guess when you start a business in your unfinished basement with a box of fabric scraps, you don't have like a line item for marketing. So, no, I've had to, you know, do the hustle approach of like, okay, what works, what doesn't work, and you test things, and you, yeah, it. I've never paid for advertising and I don't, I'm not saying that paid for paid advertising is a bad thing at all. It's just, I've never had to, and I found ways around it. Sure. So well, we got a couple minutes left and, and Glenn, if someone's interested in working or getting resources from you or working with you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Probably the best way is my email, Glenn, G L E N N dot musky, M U S K E at N D S U dot E D U. That's the one I track the most and stuff. So, and so if, I, if people are listening, they have questions. Questions, uh, you, they just shoot me. That. Yep, start with that. And if we need to have a conversation, we will. If we need to get you in touch with other resources, because I, you know, I'm not the only person out there. And yeah. you know, the Idea Center is one. There's many others out there that we need to work with. Uh, that's what we'll have you do. Perfect. And and Erica, why don't you give us your contact information again, where they can go find not only Bison Booties but now Bison Bibs. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, we're at bisonbooties.com. And if you just do a Google search for Bison Booties, we should come up very quickly. Otherwise, bisonbooties.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Bison Booties. So search for us there. Easy to find. And you do engage. So if people have yep. questions, I can. I promise you that she will respond. And, and Glenn, you have newsletters and, and people. Yep. Um, why don't you give us that, that show that you do again? Give us the Powerofbusiness.net. Powerofbusiness.net. I encourage you to go out there and check out that channel. I, I mean, I don't know where the time goes. We, we literally have like a minute left. I, I want to thank both of you for coming into the studio on behalf of Kelly and myself and Jim. And um, It's been a wealth of information. We're going to have you back on future shows to continue this discussion. There's so much more that we could talk about in marketing and learning more about that. So 
Once again, you've been listening to the Free For All Friday program, the Pride of Dakota edition. And this is Scott Wild, Kelly Wald, the marketing specialist for Pride of Dakota program. And uh, want to give us a quick r- update on what the show dates are real quick. Um, Capital Day will be September 11th. We're in Dickinson, the 20th and 21st of September. In Williston, October 18th and 19th. Grand Forks, November 8th and 9th. Minot, November 15th and 16th. Fargo, November 21st through the 23rd. And December 5th through 7th will be in Bismarck. Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing you at those events and also listening here on the Free For All Friday program next month, Friday Dakota edition. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for Free For All Friday on Super Talk 1270, keeping you involved and informed on issues that impact our area. To find more local talk at 11 o'clock, keep your radios right here on Super Talk 1270. ABC News, Super Talk 1270. Accurate news, stimulating talk. This is KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck.